In this session, I'm going to be covering some of the key things to think about when you're when you're creating content or creating a content plan or just yeah at, at all different levels of, of what you're doing with your content so we're going to talk about what to ask and, and how to work out who you're creating for um, and that will include showing how to do a bio persona and we're also then going to go into what do you want to say to them and a little bit about how to improve your content style um, and then how to create an effective content plan, some things to think about and ways to start. And I'm also going to include lots of tools in the session as well. Um, so when I share the slides after the session, so I'll be sharing them into the Facebook group. There'll be lots of links that you can click through. Pretty much everything that I ever use to create content is are in these slides, which is great. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a spotlight on social media, which maybe covering a few things you've heard from me before but we'll also introduce a few new a few new things to consider um and also finally how to improve the visibility of your content and so that's not just on social media but also if you decide to do blog posts as well to start i'm going to talk about what is content marketing so according to the content marketing institute um it's a lengthy quote um and it's content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience and ultimately to drive prof profitable customer action. So what this means is you are consistently creating quality and relevant content to build a stronger, more loyal relationship with your audience. And that is for the purpose for your customers to choose to buy from you and again and again. And one of the best things about content marketing or marketing that focuses on producing great content is that it really shows your customers that you care about them. And the first step in creating great content for your customers or for your potential customers is to get really clear on who are you creating for. So I cover this in almost like every webinar that I do, but it's particularly important in this session because at the core of creating any content is knowing who are you trying to reach with that content. So you want to think about your current customers and work out if you can group them into distinct personalities. For this exercise, I especially focus on your best customers. So it might be worth grabbing a pen for this part, but this is something you can also do after. Um, when I share the slides, I'll put some extra notes to kind of explain each of these sections in a bit more detail but it's good as a good exercise just grab a pen and paper and describe in detail the demographics of your best customers um, and that means their age location income education employment and this is where you can start to kind of segment out different customer groups that you know who shop with you and this can be based on your knowledge or your team's knowledge it's something you can talk about as a team and try and get a couple of distinct personalities and commonalities between uh, among the people that normally buy from you also think about their behaviors and what i mean by behaviors is their buying habits um, you could look at their transaction history with you and the occasional the timing of purchases so with behaviors it, it could be thinking about if you've got customers that only ever shop with you a couple of times a year, for example, around Christmas, they might not be one of your best customers, so it might not be worth targeting them. But then if you're thinking about a Christmas campaign, then these guys might be one of your main buyer personas for a Christmas campaign. So this is just the kind of start of thinking about how to target specific customers with specific messages at the right time. And the other thing is psychographics, which, and that's more of the kind of like, the more psychological aspects of the, buyer personalities who uh, who usually shop with you. So it's thinking about like what are their opinions, their attitudes, their beliefs, their interests, their values, their lifestyles. And this you can work this out through if you are if you have a good relationship with your with your customers. Yeah, in marketing it's never good to assume, but in some cases it's just good to work on the knowledge that you have. You can also pull together if you've had any kind of surveys or it, then you can use information from there or comments um, on Facebook posts. If you have any kind of comments from people, um, this can be a good way to start. If you're doing this around Instagram, for example, you can look at people who are following you and just get an idea of what people believe in. I'd say that it's a fairly safe assumption to make that um, because of yeah, because of the nature of running a food hub, it's likely that your customers will 
um, have certain beliefs around local food. That's a pretty safe assumption. Um, yeah, so but this is a good place to start. So on the next slide, I want to talk about creating bio personas. And these will really help you to understand and empathize with your customers and prospective customers because it helps you to kind of put a face and a name to that segment or that customer group. And this will help you for lots of different things. It will help you know what kind of content to create. Because if you know that customer, you know what they're likely to engage with or what they're likely to, what information they're likely to find interesting. Um, it will help you to know what topics to cover. So if you go back to psychographics and you think, you know, what, um, it, you know, if it's a safe assumption that your customers care about local food, then you know that topics around local food systems are going to be something that they'll resonate, that will resonate with them. And it will help you develop an effective tone of voice and style that will be consistent across your post because essentially you're writing, you'll feel like you're writing for one person if you create a good bio persona because you'll have pulled together all of the com like the commonalities between a customer group. And essentially you're writing for that kind of common group. But for you as a, as a content producer, it's almost like a one-to-one -one relationship. And when you're writing for that one person who has a name and an identity, then they will resonate with what you're writing a lot more. It will come across as a lot more authentic, a lot more personable. Um, and it's just a much more effective vantage point to create content from. Um, it will also help you to know where to focus your efforts. And what I mean by this is that if you know your customer and you've created an identity for your customer based on what you know about your current customers, you'll know where they are, you know where they're gonna engage with your content, you'll know if they're more likely to spend time on Facebook than Instagram, um, you'll know if actually the best way to reach them is in um, a poster in the local in a local shop. Or, so you'll start to kind of get the best idea of where you can create content that will actually reach the people who are in this customer group that you're that you're creating a bio persona for. Um, as I mentioned about seeing wider commonalities, like this is a really important thing to think of a type of customer and things that within that group, what, what they have in common and start to kind of pull one identity from that. And it will just help you to start as, as you're kind of interacting with customers more and you're, when you're like looking at what you're posting and interactions with it, you'll just start to see more clearly who the people are that are resonating with what you're putting out. And it will also really help you to handle objections. If you've seen the world through the eyes of this customer group, you, it's, it's a good exercise, which I'll come on to in the next slide to look at the kind of objections they might have um, for, for buying from you. So for example, in the, you know, for example, with organic food, one of the main objections is around price. If it's from a particular customer demographic. So if you want to target that particular customer demographic and you know that that's an objection, this puts you in a good position to know what the objections are going to be and handle those objections through the content that you're putting out. So it's kind of like helping you to kind of deal with what might be a buying objection in advance before it even occurs. And also the added benefit of that is that your customer will feel they'll feel understood. Um, and that generates customer loyalty and more of a desire to buy from you. I've put a really great link here for an article that will take you step by step um, through creating a buyer persona. And there's also a slide here, which I've kind of collected all of the different things that you might want to think about. And you could do this on a bit of paper and draw a picture of the person. You can, it doesn't have to be on, on, on the computer, but these slides will be shared. So feel free to use this slide as well. You could drop it into your own marketing plans if you're creating them in this way. Um, but what you can see here is I'm getting really kind of granular on who these people are. Um, and what I mean by so goals is have in mind when you're writing what their goals are, that this is relevant and think about how your offering will help them achieve the goals that are relevant. Um, challenges, again, think about how what you're offering will help them with particular challenges that are relevant to what you're offering. Um, what content topics might they be interested in? This is quite useful because it might, if you see a lot of commonalities um, in the local area of like, your customers being interested in one thing, this can give you a really good kind of angle for creating new content topics that might cover this topic. Like for example, a beloved sports team that everyone in your local area supports, things like this. So it just, it's good having this because then it, it also helps with content creation ideas. 
Um, and also this kind of builds community. Your customers will feel like, yeah, you're part of their community and you understand them and you're interested in the same things that they are, which again, builds loyalty. Um, think about what they care about. Again, what, where they hang out online and offline. Um, so where do they like to consume content? Um, are there specific social channels where they do or don't engage? Um, what channels appeal to different personas? For example, you might reach a different audience with Facebook than you would with Instagram. Um, so you might have a slightly, this, you, you could start with this now, this could be something to think about later, but you could have a slightly different tone of voice for each platform, depending on which of your customer base are likely to interact with you on each platform. So this is, again, as I'm going through all of this, these are kind of like the keys to the kingdom and there's a lot of information beyond this. You could take it as far as you like, but this is a good way, to, this is a very good place to start. And think about your message. So you'll have, if I've talked about key messages a lot in previous webinars, but I've got a little bit about them later on in the slides, but here it's think about which messages specifically speak to this particular customer group or this person give them a name and give them an image and it will help you when you're writing to this person but and also to think about what messages particularly will resonate with them so for example if it's like a like an act like if you're if your buyer persona is isn't you know for example more of a kind of activist character messages around your impact on the food system and the call to adventure of changing the food system together will appeal to them. Whereas, for example, if it's like, um, if you're targeting families, it might be more around food safety and um, nutritious food for your family and um, messages around, yeah, like making access to local food easy and maybe something around affordability. So it's starting to kind of then you've got this template when you're writing that you to be able to know who you're talking to. And it will really help you when you're looking at what you want to write to, to have this core place to start from. So it's having the person you're speaking to front of mind whenever you create any content. And also you can bring this persona to life with any quotes that you might have gathered during interviews, testimonials or customer feedback. Um, and you can also consider you know, just have in mind what is the customer context and what is the reality for your customers. Um, and again, this is particularly applicable if you're looking to target perhaps a different social demographic and you're looking to you know widen the accessibility of nutritious local um, foods to, for example, people who have, are a different social demographic. And also think about why do these people, if this is a current customer rather than a target customer, again, to find that, um, or it could be a current customer that would be a great group for target customers. But either way, why do they currently identify with your food enterprise or why would they identify with your food enterprise? So think about that maybe from the vantage point of the sustainable local ethical food movement as a whole. Like why, 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 why would these people choose to, to shop with you as opposed to what the majority of people do, i.e. shopping with supermarkets. So it's having that in mind too. Like what's the, what's the point of interest that will either maintain the relationship with this person buying from you or lure new people to, to your enterprise. Next, you wanna consider what you want to say to this person. And again, knowing who the person is really will really help with this. Um, so I always, say I always start everything with thinking about the customer who are you speaking to and now you want to really think about what do you want your audience or your reader or the customer to know about your enterprise what do you want them to care about and what do you want them to do and what valuable ideas can you build your content assets around and it really helps to have your own main goal in mind so what are your key business goals what is your mission as an enterprise and a nice kind of point of inspiration around this is to consider what would the world be like if we can realize our big goal as a movement that kind of point in the future when we have yeah when we've realized that the goal of what we want for a future food system and that can be a nice inspiration point for your storytelling around what you want to say so the thing is with with creating content is if you can and this can also this doesn't have to be I, so storytelling is a really a really effective method of speaking to your audience because um, there's research that shows that people are 22 times more likely to remember something if it's embedded within a story. 
and it's so it's really worth taking time to consider or create your own unique brand story but also to think about how you can infuse storytelling even in shorter posts so telling a story doesn't have to be long form it can be just if a four paragraph post and how can you how can you kind of filter that through a story lens and a way that helps me with doing this is to think about like what is the call to adventure um to your audience like it's what you know what how like going back to the the point before around inspiration and what would the world look like if we could realize our big goal is a movement what is how can you kind of phrase that as a call to adventure for your audience what how can you kind of inspire them to get involved in this this journey and this story that we're all in and creating a better food system and you can choose here some compelling ideas or themes that you can infuse within your story which reflect your values and voices of business and so here's a kind of a simple framework that and again you don't have to do this in every post but it's just good to as a practice to think can I can I storify this um, just to make your content that bit more effective and it's thinking that so here's a little framework that I use which helps me and it's just starting with the human and this again it's going back to your bio percentage this will make that easy for you and it's also if you're writing a um, so that can be if you're writing directly to a customer from their point of view um, then also this could be if you're writing um, a bit of information around one of your growers or one of your suppliers it's starting with the human at the center of a story and then you know what is their goal or desire so if you're talking about a grower story you know this could be starting with them who they are what they're about and then what were they hoping to achieve through starting up their enterprise and like what's their goal or desire what drives them and then one of the kind of cool things around good storytelling is to create a point of tension and that's you know did they face any resistance or tension or obstacles in their journey and you know for example if you're looking to write your own stories of enterprise or maybe on the other side of um coronavirus lockdown you know perhaps that that is a mega point of tension <laughs> and a big obstacle and for lots of hubs has been it has yeah has been a tricky thing to overcome but is a really great tool in storytelling which you can tell your story about that also infusing that then with your values as a business in that how you were able to overcome um that point of tension and the hot like the story for example through coronavirus with that point of tension we talk about how you were able through that to maintain to like maintain supply of food to vulnerable people or um yeah so it's just this is a really nice simple framework and it might seem a bit abstract now but sometimes just having the three points of like human goal tension outcome um or the final message um what you want to inspire your audience to believe in or care about through this story having those kind of four points can help you to just tweak what could be like a good post into kind of a really like um imagination grabbing post which is more memorable So oh, I don't actually want to replay this now, but I put this in the slides because the next bit is talking about how to, um, so also as part of uh, your, what you want to say, um, I've created a whole webinar before around how to master your messaging. So some really good um, steps to work through in this, in this session that will help you get clear on your messages. So this will be in the slides that I share. You can just click on it and it'll play the video for you. So the next part is to improve your content style and there's a couple of things that I'm really going to emphasize here that will instantly um, improve what you're writing and perhaps you're doing this already but it's just really focusing on if you're on social media making your first sentence really strong and really attention grabbing if it's a blog post write the best headline that you can and this is what it's worth spending more time on the first sentence than the rest of the post it's it you can even write the rest of the post first and then after that spend a bit more time to get the first sentence really amazing um there's a really good link here that will help you it's um a good article that kind of will talk through how to write an amazing headline but that also works as well for a first sentence so approach a first sentence like you would a headline because in social media your first sentence is your headline um and this also applies for your your first paragraph on social media because 
often when your posts are posted, people will have to click see more to see the rest of your post and they'll only get the first couple of lines. So having re a really strong, impactful first and second line could be the difference between people engaging with your content and your message and your story or not, and just not bothering to click read now and scrolling. So um, it's really take the time to make these as strong as you possibly can. So again, I've, there's a headline analyzer here. There's a um, how to write a great introduction here. Um, in a blog post, this counts as well to make your headline the best and create a really strong intro. I always write the introduction at the end after I've written the whole blog post um, because then you're much more um, aware of what you're talking about. You're, you refresh yourself with all of the things that are contained and, and it just makes it so much easier to kind of summarize and create a really strong intro at the end. Sometimes it's also that kind of blank page, um, the blank page thing where when you're trying to write a great intro with looking at a blank page, it can be hard to start from that. And sometimes it's useful starting from the kind of the content points that you want to make um, and then go back and create the, the intro. So that's that. But having these bits really strong um, is especially important for social media for people to actually see, engage with what you're, what you're putting out. So. And I'm going to talk here just a little bit about style for content online. Um, and it's important to remember that writing online is a lot more casual. Um, so you can get away with writing it, how you speak, as close to how you speak as you can. Um, and this I struggle with personally as a bit of a perfectionist because I, 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 I want to write kind of perfect sentences. But actually, then this I've kind of shown myself over and over with the way that people engage with posts that I've written for other brands or is that the more the simpler and the more kind of almost like colloquial and like speaking um, content is, particularly on social media, the more that people react positively to it and engage with it. Um, so it's really important to prioritize readability of your content on social media or in blogs or anything you're writing online and write as a priority for ease of understanding. This is because it's it's a, a confused customer always says no. And by saying it's also a confused customer always feels no. And at the point where a customer is confused or like in the worst case scenario feels stupid, they're gonna click off and not want to engage with the content. Um, so it's it's really important to kind of make sure that what you're putting out is readable and easy to understand. Um, there's a couple of things that help with this and that's using bullet point lists and short paragraphs. Um, break up your paragraphs on social media. I wouldn't write paragraphs any longer than two, two sentences if you can. And also use transition words. So that's words that um, like, for example, like, like for example, <laughs> is a transition word. It, it, it's something that if you are interested in kind of like writing style, people avoid um, because it's it's not great for prose or if you're writing literature, but if you're writing online for people to understand what you're saying, transition words are really helpful. They help your writing to flow. They help pull the reader through your content. Um, if you're just writing sentences without transition words, it can sound quite stifled and just inf like information heavy. Transition words, it's like holding your audience's hand and pulling them through the post or the blog post or the, the caption with you. It's a nice thing to do for your audience. Um, I've put a really great link here, which just has a list of the different types of transition words. So as you're kind of going through content, you can use that as a prompt um, as well to, to help you start new sentences if you're struggling. And the other thing is to be really clear and concise. There's a link here to something called the Hemingway app which you can drop, you can copy paste your content in and it will highlight bits that it doesn't feel are working or aren't very clear. So it can help you to edit your work. Um, so this is, it's a, it's a good habit to get into of just writing, trying not to kind of edit as you write, um, just write. Don't edit until you're finished. Just don't be critical as you're writing. Just get what you want to say out as quickly as you can. Um, as much like talking as you can and then once you've actually written what you wanted to say then edit it because it's like as you're kind of writing if your inner critic is like editing as you go it can make content writing and content creation a really painful process um 
and so it's yeah so it's it's useful to know these tools are here and there's another one here um right with seo in mind i've put a link here to this great tool that will again do a similar thing to the hemingway app but it will look at your content in terms of seo and that's um it's searchability um how easy is it to find your content with how your content's written um so both of these are useful tools to put this one actually has a cool function where when you put your content in it will tell you the readability score so you can see is it easy to read is it hard to read does it need more transition words and it will help you see if there's anything you can do to make it easier to understand so if you think when you're writing you've got these two tools afterwards that will help you edit i, I personally find that helps me just get what i want to say on the page and then copy paste it in these and then edit whilst using these tools um, and also i've created something here um, that i hope will be helpful and it's a uh, this is this is really for blogs um, but it's also useful for social media in that it's a plan for what you will write if you want to do a longer form social media post um, you can use this plan as a template that is a downloadable template that you can edit and work on yourself and it just breaks down um, yeah, what um, in stages and with useful tips of how to create um, a blog post in particular. But again, some of the tips are useful for um, social media as well. And it's just creating an outline um, of what you want to say. And this will help you again, rather than trying to work from top to bottom, right from top to bottom in a post. Um, it will help you if you've got like an outline, this like, you know, intro, point one, point two, point three, point three, bit of detail about each, maybe a quote you might want to use and then conclusion and call to action. Um, it will just help you when you've got that structure to then write the post with more ease and with less stress. Also, it, will be, it has points in there to remind you to make sure you're putting a call to action in there um, with tips on how to do an effective call to action. If you're trying to write calls to action that work with some of the algorithm techniques that I've talked before. It has some tips around that too. So, cool, skip one, no, I didn't. Okay, yeah, cool. So, um, the next thing I wanna talk about is how to create an effective content plan. And there's really no one way to do this um, as content plans are totally unique to each business. But there are things that can help and it's it's a really good process to go through because simply just walking through the steps of planning um what you're going to write and when and where etc is really helpful for food enterprises and small businesses um and the first step of this is to consider what your goals are and that's what you hope to accomplish with your content and it's just something that I, I i'm going to repeat um whenever i talk about content or writing posts for social media it's always linking these actions back to your overall business goals and this is important for maintaining motivation and energy for creating this stuff because you know the overall goal that it's helping towards um, so thinking about what you hope to accomplish with your content why does your content exist and what do you want your audience to do once they've seen it is a good thing to think about and also yeah just knowing what the value is of this activity to your enterprise and having all of these things in mind um, will just help you with creating content consistently, which is one of the keys to creating good content is just to consistently do it. <laughs> um, and so for example, uh, some goals that are good goals to attach to content creation are brand awareness. And this can be also like reinforcing your brand messages, what you're about, who you are, why should people care? Um, also goals are, you know, for writing good content are engagement. Um, and that would be engaging with your posts. And this also links into brand awareness, but engagement also links with relationship with your enterprise. Um, your website or shop front traffic is a very good goal for your, for your content, particularly with social media. So if, you're social, if your goal with your social posts is to create more traffic to your shop front, it's a good goal. Um, and also customer retention and loyalty, which links to all of these things really. And it's like I mentioned, one of the great things about content um, marketing is that it really shows your customers that you care about them if you're producing good content for them um, that will help them or that they'll find interesting or, you know, so it's, it's, it helps with this. And also creating consistent content really helps with loyalty and trust um, because you're reinforcing 
your messages through creating consistent content, you're there because you're posting consistently. And that helps to reinforce this idea of you being a trustworthy enterprise that your customers want to build, want to feel loyal towards. So as part of your content plan, I've talked about key messages before, but here it's, my point here is just when you're writing a content plan or thinking of a content plan, write a list of your key messages, just clarify them, write them down. Um, think about what makes you unique, what are your main benefits, what do you want your customers to think about you and what you want them to know about you. Also think about what they love about you and you'll know this from testimonials or from feedback that you've been getting. And all of this can like feed into some really potent key messages that you can infuse your content with. And it's like, if you've got a list of these, it really helps with creating content. Um, and also it helps your audience to resonate with your, with your content. Um, and yeah, it, it's just useful to know what to write in your social posts. It's like a, it, it's, if you've got key messages that you know you want to include as often as possible, um, it, it just helps with that step of actually writing the content. You've got a go-to list of, of ways of saying things and things to say that are important to you and you know resonate with your customers that you can go to when you're in this process of creating content. And it's really important to create these messages based on what your audience needs or wants, which you'll know from, your, from when you're creating your buyer personas um, and combined with what you want them to know about you. And that would be, for example, your goal for a piece of content is what you want the customer to know about you and what you want them to do. So, and then just make it as easy as you can for your customers to see what they would gain from buying from you with these messages. And so the next, there's a list of things to consider here when you're creating an effective plan. And these essentially you could use this as a step-by-step -step of things to think about when you're looking at this yourself and maybe write, writing your own plan. And that's, you wanna consider each platform you use and have some specific goals for each platform. And by plat channel, channel or platform, I mean Facebook or Instagram or your blog on your website or any, any way that you're, putting content out there or any place that you're putting content out there is essentially a channel or a platform that you're using. So have a, have a, have a think about what you want to achieve on each. Um, also think about how, so with assigning responsibilities, what I mean by this is think about how you'll structure your team to put your content plan into, in, in motion. Um, consider who's gonna manage the content on each channel. If you've only got a small team or if it's just you doing it, this is an easy one, but if, you've, if you want to bring in other members of the team to contribute content, if you want to challenge your team to provide you with um, content that you can then use, this could be a, a bit where you're writing, you know, who's going to help this week, who's going to help next week, who will provide some videos, or if you want to pull in some more, more help with this. The most important thing as well is to plan for sustainable consistency. So you want to plan, consider how often you're going to post, um, and when you're thinking about how often you, you want to post, plan for it to be a sustainable thing that you can achieve so that you can maintain consistency because that's very important. So if you know that you only have time to post a couple of times a week, then that's what you're gonna have to put into your plan. But it's, it's just making sure that you even just write down that commitment of, I can at least find half an hour a week to do a couple of posts. It's that, yeah, it, it will help you have that consistency of actually doing those two posts because it's easy for two posts in half an hour a week to suddenly become no posts and no time that week. So it's just good to have that, like written down that plan of I'm gonna post two, three, four times a week. And you can go into more detail here of what days and et cetera, et cetera, depending on where you are with your planning. You can also, yeah, what you want the posts to be about and, you know, this is where you kind of could write a list of topics or themes that you want to talk about based on the work you've done with your buyer personas, or um, you could even have a list when you constantly populate it with new ideas. Um, so as part of your plan, just keep collecting ideas and have, uh, yeah, but also know what topics you want to talk about. And also a really important thing is what are your calls to action going to be? So what is the desired action from the audience that you want um, either at certain times or on certain posts or certain channels? So it's always thinking about this. So this week, you know, on the days that your shop front is closed, for example, is your call to action about joining your mailing list? 
um, when your shop front's open is your is your call to action purely driving people to your shop front. So it's just thinking about what you want people to do once they've seen your posts. Um, also plan to measure and improve. So measure how your posts are doing um, using insights on social media and you can track um, views and traffic to your blog posts. Um, so just use whatever tools you have to figure out how people are receiving your content and if it's working or not. Um, use that information to then work out what's effective, what isn't, and then continually improve what content you're creating. And also here's a content calendar template that you can use. Um, but again, it, it's dependent on you, the level of complexity and detail that you want to go into. Even just kind of going through these thoughts and writing them down is, is a useful practice, but you can go, you can get even more organized. Um, if you want to get more organized, that's useful if you've got more than one person actually creating content uh, and posting it. Uh, but if it's just one person, you might not need to go this far, but just keep a list of ideas and, and things like that. So here's just like a little, some slides that you might want to use. I'm not sure, but this is just one way of doing things. There's a like hundred different ways of doing things. And this content plan that I've shared here is a different way than these slides, but it's just, you could, you could start with like dividing what you want to do through the season. So you could look at a, a kind of a mini plan of what your goals are in winter, spring, autumn, summer. Um, you could then think about what key themes you'll cover in each of these um, seasons. It's a nice thing to do um, these this seasonally as food enterprises. And it's also, again, it's helping your, your customers as well to engage in the inner and, and to be aware of the seasons, which is always a good thing. Um, you can include here key dates or details. Um, for example, winter, you could think around content around Christmas. That you're, and if you know you've got quiet points as well, you can think of ways that you can work with what your seasonality as an enterprise is. Um, which is really, really useful to do. And it just helps you then have that overview of the year in advance, which will help your content creation feel a bit less overwhelming. And when you're in a point where you can start planning in advance, I guarantee you're actually gonna start enjoying it um, if you're not already. And also thinking about what your key messages are at each point and call to action. So if you want different calls to actions at different times, so this is the time to think about it. Um, so that's just one way of doing it. So next I want to talk a bit about social media. So a bit of a spotlight on content creation for social media. So I've talked about some of these things before, but in separate sessions. So here I'm going to pull it all together in one. And this is part of your planning to choose and commit to a posting schedule. And this is really important. And this can be as little or as much as you like, but this is, this is a best case scenario. Um, and that would be to post two to three times on Instagram per week to do my 41 Facebook rule, um, which puts you in, on the good side of the algorithm on Facebook. And that's doing four shared posts a week, two of your own cr originally created posts and one call to action post, which could be you know, um, your shop front, uh, remind, your shop front opening reminder post. And you could, this is flexible, but this generally means on Facebook, you really wanna be posting once a day. Um, so a bit more regular than Instagram. But this is flexible, this is a, a, a good rhythm to get into to do well with the algorithm because you don't want to be doing seven call to action posts per week. Um, but I've read about this elsewhere and I've talked about this elsewhere, but I'll, I'll share a link to that session as well um, for anyone watching this that hasn't been on those sessions. So I'll make sure that um, this, when I share the slides, this clicks through to an explanation. And also story posts, which you want to do across both Instagram and Facebook you want to do three a day. And again, this is just a best case scenario and the best content plan is a sustainable content plan. So it's really what works for you, um, but just getting into a rhythm of regularity and consistency. Um, but if you can post three stories per day, that's amazing. Um, and this could be videos, short snippets that you've taken in advance and you could just spend 10 minutes in the morning uploading them. Um, on the five days a week, for example, that you choose. And I, this could be a five day a week thing, Monday to Friday, if you wanted. And then you could just spend, like you'd be collecting videos or you could do one video, one picture, um, one text thing. So it's it's something that, again, if you could get, get into the room. I've done a, another webinar around creating stories. And next week I'm gonna be launching a stories challenge, which will help with this process and explain a lot more. So expect some more on this, which will, which will help with this point. 
So I'm gonna talk here now about a tool that is a new-ish tool that will help your business, the Facebook and Instagram Creator Studio. So this is a whole new way to, yeah, to create your content. And I've just clicked through to show you, but this is something that when you go on it for the first time, it has really amazing tutorials that will walk you through step by step how to use your insights, how to like look at your content, how to create content, how to schedule content, um, and lots of different things that will help you. And you could do all of your posting through this. Um, and it also has it for Instagram as well. So it's a really useful thing when you could do, yeah, you you, you can do all of your posting through this this tool. So I'm introducing it here just to tell you it exists and that it's useful and perhaps I might be doing depending on if if, uh, if you want to I might do a session on just getting to grips with it and using it is in an effective way where we kind of walk through it step by step together um yeah so that's new you may or may not have seen it before and so the final thing that I want to talk about, just keeping an eye on time, is to improve the visibility of your content. So you've spent all of this time creating a great content plan. You are getting into the room of creating content. You're making content. You're putting it out there. But one of the most important things is just trying to do all of the right things to make sure as many people as possible actually see what you're putting out there. So it's to do what you can to improve the visibility of what you're doing. And for Facebook in particular, Mark Zuckerberg, says that Facebook's goal is to reach a point where ads are as relevant and as, this is a quote, as relevant and timely as the content your friends share with you. So what this means is that essentially your visibility will be penalized for anything which is not this, which is anything that you put out as a business or business page that isn't as relevant or timely as the content of your users, friends or family is gonna get penalized and seen less. So. Now, as I've mentioned before in other sessions, it's really important to get on the right side of social media algorithms. Um, and I've talked about that before and the 41 strategy will help. Also, I did an Instagram session last week, which talks about the, the algorithm and how to get on the right side of the algorithm on Instagram. It's on the Facebook group if you, if you wanna have a look at that for more details. Um, yeah, so the other thing to improve social visibility, and these are just a really basic summary of the algorithms is just to maintain consistency, which I've talk, just talked about how important that is in a content plan. Um, make sure your posts are interesting and that will be a given when you know who your customers are and you know what they care about because you'll be writing for them. And have faith in yourself that your posts will be interesting if you know who you're writing to. And then just keep in mind like the three E's of um, writing good content, which is you know, think, is it entertaining? Is it educational? Um, does it provoke emotion? Um, and also for Instagram, you want to think about timeliness, um, community, and that's like, and that's also on Facebook as well. It's like creating community with your posts. Does it provoke reactions from people? Are people having conversations around your content? Um, it's, it's just a great thing to do to just be thinking about your relationship with your, with your audience when you're posting on social media. And another thing to gain more social visibility is to think more about video content. So again, this is an ideal situation, but I appreciate that video can be quite can be quite intimidating to get into if you're not creating a lot of it. Um, I've also done a session about creating video content, and I'll probably do more around that because it's it's a really good way to creating more video is a really great way to get more um, results from your social media. And the ideal would be to share seventy percent of your content would be video. 20%, and this is of the creative content that you create yourself, 20% image and 10% text or link posts. But I would really stick to just video and just image posts, but, but try and do as much video as possible. Um, and that was also looking at the stories here, three, three per day. It's people want to see more video on social media. And it's a really good kind of core marketing philosophy to kind of give your audience more of what they love um, that will always kind of put you in a good position with them. And also with video, just want to say that, um, yeah, video just always gets the most reach and engagement. So 
just keep that in mind. And yeah, so the next thing I want to talk about is blogging. And I've just put a little bit on this session about that and haven't gone into too much detail. Um, and that's because I don't know how much you're blogging, but this is something I might do a longer session on if there's interest for it. So please let me know in the in the comments when I post this on the Facebook group, if you're interested in more content around how to write a great blog post and everything around SEO and blogging, then let me know and I'll, I'll do a session on that. Um, because the first thing I wanna say is consider SEO. <laughs> and that's the most important thing when you're thinking about visibility for any blog post that you write. And like a major part of that is having a really great title um, and also having a good meta description. And to describe what a meta description is, if you don't know, it's when you when you see um, when you see a when you see a link on Google search, it's the little bit of description after the link to that to that piece of content. So when you're on Google search and there's a tiny little bit of writing underneath the the link, that's a meta description, and that's what and and Google when it when it's doing its thing of it, it will be looking at your blog post title titles and meta descriptions um keeping in mind certain keywords etc to yeah to to rank it um on search pages so again this is something i can do in more detail in other sessions but getting close on time um and just a few quick things about how to write a great title um keep them short i shared a really great resource earlier on which is a link to a headline analyzer which will help you write great titles uh, which should definitely include the most popular keyword phrases um, for, for the page. And that's what do you, what, yeah, what, what are your most important keywords? Um, I can talk maybe in another session about keyword strategy if this is of interest. Um, and also, yeah, meta descriptions as well should be short. There are definite character limits around this and they should try and highlight your unique selling points or at least the unique selling points of the post that you're posting. Um, and should accurately summarize the content as well. Um, and yeah, so as well as that, make sure you share any blog posts on social media. It's really helpful to get guest writers to write a blog posts for you because then it's likely that they'll then share that on their social channels um, and their followers will be able to engage with who you are and that content as well. Um, I've created a nice template here of how to create your own blog outline. And this is going to have lots of details a bit. In it. I will go into more depth for all of these bits. So actually, there's a really good resource. Um, and I could do a webinar where we could talk through that as well, if that's of interest. So thank you for um, attending the session. And I really hope that it was of interest and useful to you. Um, please join our Facebook group. It's a really useful space where I'm keeping all of these webinars and more. Um, if you go to units, all of the previous content and previous webinars are here, um, summarised under the different sections. So you've got everything you need to know um, to do really effective marketing for your food enterprise. All of this is targeted specifically for food enterprises, so you know that it's it's for you. Um, and also what would be really great in the Facebook group is if you want to, yeah, um, get a bit more involved here that would be great if you've got any questions for me if there's any topics you want to cover um, please feel free to post um, don't be don't be afraid um, to, to post it's it's really nice to have a really thriving space for us all to to gain from um, and you can also comment and post as well here and I'd love to hear from you so great so thanks so much for attending um, I'm going to stop recording now